people don't realize that beekeeping is a real thing. I mean, it's a real business. Uh, there are things that you do that are profitable. I mean, it's, it, it's not just kind of the hobby. Uh, for some people, it is a hobby. But for you, it's actually a real business. Uh, and so explain to us what the business is. I mean, what, what are you actually producing? What are you doing to help others? Sure. So a lot of what I do is keep bees on other people's property who they want honeybees, but they don't necessarily want to be beekeepers themselves. So I'll place my hives on other folks' property and I'll manage and maintain those colonies. Here in Texas, um, folks can qualify for an agricultural exemption on their property taxes if they have honeybees and meet certain requirements. So that's a lot of what I do. Pre-COVID, I was offering a lot of educational opportunities. You know, I do speaking engagements or teach classes or go to schools or civic groups and teach folks about bees. And then, of course, I do live bee removals, which are my favorite thing to do as a beekeeper. Um, you know, it's always extraordinary to me to see how bees are building in these places that they've chosen in without any human interaction. Beyond just the honey aspect, why do you think bees are an important part of, of our ecosystem? Sure, they're incredibly important to our ecosystem. They provide a lot of diversity, um, but they're also important to our food system. Bees actually are responsible for pollinating one out of every three bites of food we eat. There are some crops that are solely dependent on bees. So without bees, our grocery store and our world would look entirely different. So Erica, we often talk about the queen bee and the worker bees. I mean, there's this huge hierarchy, which I find extremely interesting. Kind of break it down for us how these colonies actually, you know, come together to work together and how they deem, you know, who's the boss and, you know, who are the real workers? Sure. So a typical honeybee colony has about 50,000 bees in it. And there are three types of bees in every colony. First and foremost, we have the queen bee. She's arguably one of the most, you know, important creatures on the planet. She's the most important bee in the hive. Her only job is to lay eggs for the colony. In her peak egg laying time, she'll lay 2,000 eggs per day. Wow. And so that she can focus on this job, she has a group of female worker bees that take care of her. They care for all of her needs. They feed her, they clean her, they even pre-digest her food before they feed her. Um, so there are female worker bees in the hive and they actually make up most of the bees in the colony. Female worker bees make up about 90 to 100% of the honeybee colony. Wow. And the male drone bees make up only about 10% of the colony. And that's only at certain points of the year. So right now, as we go into winter, what's happening in the honeybee colony is the female worker bees who do all the work for the hive are actually kicking the male drone bees out of the hive. And that's simply because the males have one job and that's to mate with a queen. And in the winter when resources are low, uh, they're trying to keep the colony, you know, so it has enough food to survive through the winter when we're in a dearth and there aren't a lot of things for the bees to forage. So because the male bees don't build the hive because they don't have wax glands, they don't forage for food, and they don't defend the hive, they don't even have stingers. Um, in the winter, the female bees kick them out of the hive and they either starve or freeze to death. Well, Erica, guess what? Some of those jobs aren't too bad. You know, think about Beyonce, <laughs> no offense to the queen bee, but now you understand why they call her the queen bee. And the males have a pretty good uh, gig at it. So Erica, thanks for uh, all your work and sharing with us how bees actually live and why they're important for the environment. Stay safe and don't get stung. <laughs> Thank you.